and good evening. Welcome to Heart to Heart Talk with one of our dynamic surgeons at Universal Hospital Abu Dhabi, Dr. Raghunath Prabhu. Dr. Prabhu is a laparoscopic and endoscopic surgeon at our hospital. He has had several years of experience in this field of expertise, which includes a wide variety of surgery, laparoscopic in the fields of colorectal surgery, appendix, and several other kinds of surgeries like that of the breast for breast cancer, appendix, etc. Dr. Prabhu has known in the past to teach several students of medical and allied health science background. He has also published several research papers and performed in many conferences. He has written quite a variety of case reports, which he does something very usually and every day. He is welcoming with us Dr. Raghunath Prabhu, Universal Hospital, Abu Dhabi. So, Doctor, today you will be sharing your expertise about gallstones. What is gallbladder? What are gallstones? And why don't you share with our patients out there as to what are the different types of gallbladder stones? A gallbladder is a small organ which is there on the undersurface of the liver. And the main function of this organ is to empty the bile and store the bile. So the first function, the storage of the bile and the bile is produced from the liver and then it is emptied into the intestines wherein it gets mixed with the food and helps in digestion. So now coming to the next, what is gallbladder stone? So if a stone is formed in this gallbladder, we call it gallbladder stone and there are two main types of gallbladder stones. One is cholesterol stones and the other variety is the pigmented stones. So briefly explaining how these stones form within the gallbladder. As I earlier explained, the gallbladder stores the bile. So if the cholesterol content in the bile is quite high, then it gets super saturated and 80% of the stones are from cholesterol. So you have the storage of the bile, super saturation and then formation of the stones. And this constitutes one of the main cause, the cholesterol stones. Now the other variety is the pigmented stones. This is formed by various diseases, mainly like if there is a blood disorder, like hemolytic anemias, which includes sickle cell anemia. If there is a disease of the liver, like cirrhosis of the liver, also can lead on to pigmented stones. So now the cholesterol stones constitute 80% of the cases and they are yellow in color and the pigmented stones are either dark brown or black in color. So this was about what is gallbladder and how a stone gets formed in this gallbladder leading on to gallstone disease. A lot of patients worry about what they should eat, what they should not. What are the risk factors that the patient should keep in mind about gallstones? Among the risk factors, the obesity is among the top because most of these patients have high cholesterol in their blood. Okay. Also, there is super saturation of the bile and the emptying of the gallbladder is delayed. So obesity forms one of the major risk factors for gallbladder disease. Among the other causes, you have a genetic cause wherein there is a chance that one of the family member might be having a gallbladder stone. The other factors are the dietary factors. High fatty food more commonly leads to cholesterol stones. And I had examined, as I told earlier, that a fat female aged more than 40 has a higher incidence of having a gallbladder stone. So these are the risk factors for the gallbladder stone. What is it that the patient should look for in case they think that they have gallstones? What are the signs and symptoms? Most of these gallbladder stones are silent and we call them silent gallbladder disease. Now, what do you mean by a silent gallbladder disease? These patients who have some other problems and get themselves imaged by an ultrasound or an x-ray and detect a gallbladder stone. So usually they are asymptomatic but get accidentally detected and on an imaging. So this is silent gallbladder disease. 
Now coming to the symptoms of the gallbladder stones. Some of the patients might complain of pain in the right side of the abdomen, mainly in the upper region. They might have nausea, vomiting and sometimes if the gallbladder with the stone gets infected, then they have fever. So we call this condition as acute cholecystitis. That is when the gallbladder gets inflamed and has infection, then it leads on to acute cholecystitis. Few of the patients might have jaundice and this jaundice will come when these stones will move from the gallbladder into the common bile duct. So the common bile duct is the tract from which the bile drains down into the intestine. So if the stone gets enlarged in this common bile duct, then the patient will have fever. So then we call it as obstructive jaundice. A lot of patients don't know whether gallstones can lead to complications. If so, what are the different complications that a patient with gallstones can have, doctor? The main complication what we are worried about, one is the inflammation of the gallbladder, that is acute cholecystitis. The second one would be if the gallbladder stone gets impinged at the cystic, cystic duct, then it leads to a mucosal which can then form a pus formation within it called empyma of the gallbladder. In some of the cases, these tiny little gallstones can migrate through the cystic duct into the common bile duct and then can cause obstructive jaundice. We call it cholecholithiasis when the stone is within the common bile duct. So these are the main complications what we are worried about in a case of gallbladder stone. Dr. Prabhu, when a patient with gallstones comes to you, what are the investigations and diagnosis would you do for such a patient? For the diagnosis of this uh, gallbladder stone disease, we have what is called ultrasound, which is a simple non-invasive test. Now in the ultrasound, usually we advise the patient to come overnight fasting and then when the gallbladder is empty, we do the imaging and see. The stones will be radio opaque and you can see the shadow which is there under, on the under surface of the gallbladder. So that is about ultrasound. Then there are other imaging tests like X-ray of the abdomen and CT scan of the abdomen. We usually use the CT scan of the abdomen if it is a complicated case of gallbladder infection or if there is an obstructive jaundice that is the stone within the common bile duct. Few other imaging modalities like MRCP. MRCP is magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. This is an advanced non-invasive test wherein we use an MRI machine to look for the bile duct tree. This is in complicated cases of gallbladder stone and other diseases. In the blood test, we commonly do the liver function test wherein we can see an increase in the bilirubin levels and there will be an increase in alkaline phosphatase if the stone is there in the common bile duct. We also do the complete blood picture wherein if there is infection of the gallbladder then the leukocyte count will be high, the C-reactive protein also may be high. In case of cholesterol related stones, the patients might have dyslipidemia wherein the total cholesterol and the LDL cholesterol levels might be high. So these are the basic investigations we usually ask in a case of gallbladder stone disease. Doctor, gallstones has two kinds of treatment I believe, surgical and medical. What is your opinion on that? The treatment, the standard treatment of gallbladder stone is the removal of the gallbladder along with the stones. So here I would like to give a brief note that most of the patients who come to us usually ask whether there is a way of removing the gallbladder stones without removing the gallbladder. But the standard treatment is removal of the stones along with gallbladder. Also, in the earlier days, we used to do what is called as open gallbladder stone remover or open cholecystectomy, wherein we used to put a big incision on the abdomen and then remove the gallbladder. Now with the advancement of the newer techniques what we are having, we are doing what is called as laparoscopic cholecystectomy, 
wherein we put three or four tiny less than centi one centimeter holes in the abdomen and then remove the gallbladder along with the stones. So, the standard treatment is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Only in few of the cases wherein it becomes difficult because of adhesions there when we go back to the old traditional way of removal of the gallbladder by the open technique. When the stone gets enlarged in the common bile duct, in those cases initially we have to do what is called as ERCP. Now, ERCP is a procedure wherein we pass an endoscope from the mouth into the stomach and then into the duodenum and through the opening we remove the stone which is sitting in the common bile duct. After the ERCP procedure usually the patients have to undergo laparoscopic cholecystectomy. I will like to put a brief note about laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Now, this technique is a day case procedure wherein we usually take a detailed informed consent of the patient and also the witness signature. We explain the patient what are the steps of the operations as well as what are the complications which we can have during the procedure and how the complications are dealt with. Since it is a day case procedure, we admit the patient on the day of the surgery. Usually, the patients come with overnight fasting. We take them to the anesthesia uh, to the operating room and give general anesthesia. Following that, the standard laparoscopic cholecystectomy is done. Once the operation is done, within about 3 to 4 hours, we start feeding the patient initially liquids and then gradually move on to the solid food. And by the end of the day, most of our patients get discharged. Only a few of the patients who have little bit of pain are kept for one over extra night day stay. Like many diseases, surely gallstones can also be prevented. What is your hypothesis on that? Yeah. The patients who are unfit for the standard laparoscopic cholecystectomy, usually we recommend few of the medical line of management. In that, two commonly used medicines here, one is arsodicolic acid and the other is kinodicolic acid. So, these are the two medicines which we usually give the patients. But there is a high chance that these patients might come back again with the gallbladder stone. So, medical management is only for those patients who are unfit for surgery or who are not willing for surgery. What are the patients who are unfit for surgery? Those patients who have other comorbid illnesses like cardiac wherein the ejection fraction is quite low or if they have some wall disease and they are unfit for surgery. So, these patients are unfit for general anesthesia and hence we cannot operate on these patients. Doctor, how would you prevent such diseases? As I told you earlier that one of the major risk factor is obesity and the cholesterol stones are because of the bad dietary effects. So, the, for the prevention, the main three goals would be a healthy lifestyle wherein you have a good high fiber diet, low cholesterol or fatty diet and the third would be regular exercises. So, if you follow this, then there is a high chance of prevention of gallbladder stone disease. I also would like to make a point here that in pregnancy also there is an increased chance of developing gallbladder stone disease. So, if at all these patients are having symptoms, then we usually treat them in the second trimester which is called the safe zone for any surgics, surgeries in pregnancy. So, pregnant women if they are having pain in the right side of the abdomen should consult their physician or the surgeon to look for gallbladder stones. A lot of the times patients get confused whether we should remove the gallbladder, the stone or both. What would you say to our patients? Most of the patients who come to us ask us whether we are going to remove only the stone and not the gallbladder. That is not the right answer. The answer is removal of the gallbladder stone along with the gallbladder. They get confused with the kidney stone wherein we remove the kidney stones and not the kidney. So, the treatment here is removing the gallbladder stone with the gallbladder and that is the standard technique which is followed worldwide. 
Also, few of the patients ask her whether ask us whether we are going to do a laser operation. There is no laser operation in case of gallbladder disease. It is a laparoscopic keyhole operation. So today's conclusion on the gallbladder stone disease is that the main risk factors are obesity and high fatty diet. And among the clinical features, most of them are silent gallbladder stones. And then in the symptoms, you have pain in the right side of the upper abdomen, nausea, vomiting, and few of them have jaundice. In the investigation or the diagnosis part, ultrasound forms a major role, wherein it's a non-invasive test and you can quickly detect the presence of the gallbladder stone. In the treatment aspect, the standard laparoscopic keyhole technique is the approach which is followed worldwide. In the prevention, I would suggest that if you have a healthy lifestyle with a good diet which is rich in high fiber will be better in preventing this disease. So that was Dr. Prabhu with us on Heart to Heart Talk at Universal Hospital Abu Dhabi. Here's Dr. Sakshi Sadhu, General Practitioner and Business Development Executive signing off. Keep watching. Thank you.